Welcome to Celeb Memorial TV. Join us as we honor and remember the lives of famous personalities who have touched our hearts. Stay updated with the latest news, tributes, and stories about the stars we've lost. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Let's pay tribute to the legacies of these unforgettable icons. John Beasley, who passed away at the age of 79, was a remarkable actor whose career blossomed later in life and left a memorable mark on both film and television. Best known for his roles in Rudy, The Apostle, The Sum of All Fears, Walking Tall, The Purge, Anarchy, and Sinister Two, Beasley brought depth, warmth, and authenticity to every character he portrayed. He also shined on the small screen as Irv Harper in the beloved TV series Everwood, where his performance captured the hearts of audiences everywhere. Born on June 26, 1943 in Omaha, Nebraska, Beasley's journey to Hollywood was not typical. Before becoming an actor, he worked for Union Pacific Railroad, dedicating much of his life to supporting his family. It wasn't until his mid-40s that he pursued his passion for acting, proving that it is never too late to follow one's dreams. His perseverance and talent led him to a thriving career that spanned decades. In 2002, Beasley founded the John Beasley Theater and Workshop in Omaha, which became a cornerstone for live theater in the community. The theater not only showcased diverse voices, but also focused on works by and about African Americans, fostering a space for underrepresented stories to be told on stage. Beasley's commitment to the arts extended far beyond his own career. He was a mentor and inspiration to many aspiring actors, and his dedication to his hometown never wavered. Beasley was more than just a talented actor. He was a devoted family man. He and his wife Judy shared nearly 60 years together, raising two sons and enjoying the company of six grandchildren, including Malik Beasley, a professional basketball player for the Detroit Pistons. Beasley's love for his family and his community was always evident, both in his personal life and in his work. John Beasley's legacy is one of perseverance, passion, and an unwavering commitment to the craft of acting. His contributions to film, television, and live theater will continue to inspire and influence generations to come. He will be remembered not just for his powerful performances, but for his kindness, his mentorship, and his dedication to elevating the stories that mattered most to him. Chad McQueen, who passed away at the age of 63 on September 11th, was a multi-talented actor, film producer, martial artist, and race car driver who made his own mark in the shadow of his legendary father, Steve McQueen. Born on December 28, 1960, in Los Angeles, Chad inherited his father's love for speed, action, and the entertainment industry. From an early age, he displayed a passion for racing, winning his first Mini Le Mans event at just 10 years old and continuing to excel in various racing disciplines throughout his life. Chad's acting career began with notable roles such as Dutch in The Karate Kid and The Karate Kid Part II, followed by appearances in action films like Martial Law, Death Ring, and Red Line. Beyond the screen, he found success behind the camera, earning a Telly Award for his documentary, Filming at Speed, which reflected his lifelong passion for motorsports. Chad's racing career was equally impressive, with achievements in the Sports Car Club of America and appearances in prestigious events like the Baja 1000 and the Daytona 24 Hours. Despite a life-changing accident in 2006 at Daytona International Speedway, which left him with multiple injuries, Chad's resilience shone through as he continued to be active in the racing community, eventually founding McQueen Racing, LLC. His company became a respected name in developing high-performance custom cars and motorcycles, continuing the McQueen legacy of pushing the limits of speed and innovation. Chad's personal life was marked by his enduring love for his family, including his son, Stephen R. McQueen, an actor known for his roles in The Vampire Diaries and Chicago Fire. Chad's life was filled with both triumphs and challenges, but his indomitable spirit and passion never wavered. Chad McQueen's legacy extends beyond his Hollywood and racing accomplishments. He will be remembered for his courage, determination, and the unique path he carved out for himself. He lived life on his own terms, 
embracing the thrill of the race and the art of performance. His legacy will continue to inspire those who dare to chase their dreams, just as he did every day of his remarkable life. Frankie Beverly, who passed away at the age of 77 on September 10th, was a soulful icon whose music defined an era and touched the hearts of millions. As the frontman, singer, songwriter, and producer of the legendary band Maze, Beverly's smooth voice and heartfelt lyrics became synonymous with the sound of soul and funk. Born in Philadelphia, he began his musical journey singing gospel in his local church and formed his first group, The Blenders, as a teenager. His early years set the foundation for what would become a groundbreaking career. In 1970, Beverly formed Raw Soul, which later evolved into Maze after an influential meeting with Marvin Gaye. This connection not only shaped the band's direction, but also led to the release of nine gold albums, solidifying their place in music history. Known for hits like Joy and Pain and Before I Let Go, Maze developed a devoted following that spanned generations, capturing the joy, pain, and spirit of life through their timeless melodies. Beverly's distinct all-white stage attire became a signature look, symbolizing unity and celebration. Concerts by Maze were not just performances. They were communal experiences where fans dressed in white, creating a unique and electrifying atmosphere that resonated deeply with audiences. Frankie Beverly's impact extended far beyond his music. His ability to connect with fans through relatable lyrics and soulful performances earned him a loyal following both in the U.S. and internationally, especially in the U.K., where DJs championed Maze's sound. In 2019, his music received renewed recognition when Beyoncé covered Before I Let Go, a testament to the enduring power of his work. Beverly's legacy also lives on through his family, including his son Anthony, who toured with Maze as a drummer. The 2009 tribute album, Silky Soul Music, an all-star tribute to Maze featuring Frankie Beverly, organized by Anthony and Heather Beverly, honored his lasting influence. Frankie Beverly's voice, style, and spirit will be forever cherished. He brought people together through his music, creating moments of joy and reflection that will continue to inspire. His legacy is one of soulful elegance, passion, and the unifying power of music. Peter Renaday, who passed away at the age of 89 on September 8th, was a beloved character actor and voice artist whose versatile talents graced over 200 TV shows, films, radio programs, and theme parks throughout his remarkable six-decade career. Born as Pierre Laurent Renaudet in New Iberia, Louisiana on September 6, 1935, Renaudet's journey into the world of entertainment began with his acting debut in the 1965 television series Combat, marking the start of a prolific and diverse career. Renaday is perhaps best remembered for voicing the wise and nurturing Splinter in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series, a role that made him a beloved figure among generations of fans. As the sensei and mentor to the iconic Turtles, Renaday's voice brought a calm yet powerful presence to the character, making Splinter an unforgettable part of the show's legacy. His ability to convey wisdom, humor, and warmth in his performances left a lasting impact on audiences worldwide. Beyond Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Renaday's distinctive voice could be heard in Disney theme parks, where he brought to life historical figures and beloved characters. His portrayal of Abraham Lincoln in the Hall of Presidents and Henry and Max in the Country Bear Jamboree showcased his talent for bringing characters to life with depth and charm. Additionally, Renaday lent his voice to numerous video games, including the fan-favorite character Easy Pete in Fallout, New Vegas, further solidifying his place in pop culture. Renaday was also a devoted husband to Florence, Flo, June Daniel, whom he married in 1979. Their partnership extended into the entertainment world, as Flo worked for Walt Disney Studios, and even performed alongside Renaday on the Disneyland Records album, The Sounds of Christmas. Their shared love of the arts was a cornerstone of their lives together until Flo's passing in 2011. Peter Renaday's legacy as a talented and dedicated performer will continue to live on through his memorable roles and the joy he brought to fans of all ages. 
His voice, filled with warmth and character, will forever echo in the hearts of those who grew up listening to his work. Screamin' Scott Simon, who passed away at the age of 75, was a beloved pianist and a core member of Sha Na Na, a band known for reviving 1950s rock and roll and doo-wop music. Simon joined Sha Na Na in April 1970, bringing his vibrant personality and musical talent to the group, and remained with the band until its final performance in December 2022. Over his five decades with Sha Na Na, Simon became a cherished figure in the music world, delighting audiences with his energetic performances and dedication to the nostalgic sound of rock and roll. Born on December 9, 1948, in Kansas City, Missouri, Simon's passion for music was evident from a young age. After graduating from Southwest High School in 1966, he pursued his education at Columbia University, earning a BA in 1970, the same year he joined Sha Na Na. As a pianist, songwriter, and performer, Simon was instrumental in shaping the band's distinctive style and sound, writing numerous songs that were recorded by the band and other artists. One of Simon's most notable contributions came in the 1978 film Grease, where Sha Na Na appeared as a 1950s version of themselves. Simon co-wrote the song Sandy with Louis St. Louis, which was famously performed by John Travolta in the film. The song remains an iconic part of Greece and is a testament to Simon's talent as a songwriter. Throughout his career, Simon's high-energy performances and musical prowess captivated audiences around the world. His commitment to Sha Na Na was unwavering, as he played on every album except the band's first release in 1969. Even as the music landscape evolved, Simon's dedication to keeping the spirit of 1950s rock and roll alive never wavered. Beyond his musical legacy, Simon was a devoted family man. He was married twice, first to Morgan, with whom he shared two daughters, and later to Deborah Rochetta, whom he married in 2000. Simon's battle with sinus cancer ended in Ojai, California, where he passed away surrounded by his loved ones. Screamin' Scott Simon's contributions to music will be remembered fondly, and his legacy will continue to inspire future generations of musicians who seek to capture the joy and spirit of rock and roll. Eric Gilliland, who passed away at the age of 62, was an American television producer, writer, actor, and whistler whose creative influence and talent left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Born on March 28, 1962 in Glenview, Illinois, Gilliland grew up with a passion for storytelling and performance that would shape his distinguished career. After graduating from Glenbrook South High School in 1980, Gilliland pursued his love for communication and the arts at Northwestern University, earning his degree from the School of Communication in 1984. He quickly made his mark in television, where his sharp wit, engaging storytelling, and unique perspective found a home in some of the most beloved shows of the past few decades. Gilliland's contributions as a writer and producer extended beyond simply crafting entertaining content. He was known for bringing warmth, humor, and a relatable touch to his work. His ability to blend comedy with heartfelt moments resonated with audiences and helped shape the tone of many successful TV series. Whether behind the scenes as a writer or sharing his talents as a performer, Gilliland's passion for his craft shone through in every project he touched. Beyond his professional achievements, Gilliland was known for his distinctive talent as a whistler, a quirky and endearing skill that showcased his playful personality. His enthusiasm for the little joys in life, like whistling a cheerful tune, mirrored his approach to work and personal connections, full of life, humor, and genuine warmth. Gilliland faced his battle with colon cancer with the same resilience and spirit that characterized his life and career. Even in his toughest moments, he remained an inspiration to those who knew him, embodying the strength and courage of someone who always embraced the ups and downs with grace. Eric Gilliland's legacy lives on in the laughter, joy, and unforgettable moments he brought to the screen. His work will continue to entertain and inspire, reminding us of the impact one person's creativity and passion can have on the world. He will be deeply missed by his family, friends, colleagues, and the countless fans who were touched by his work. Breaking news. 
News 1. Sigourney Weaver, renowned for her fearless roles in Alien and Ghostbusters, is seeing her past work revisited with a fresh lens as rumors swirl about her possible connection to the Star Wars universe. Known for her iconic portrayal of Ellen Ripley, often critiqued as too girl boss or too masculine, Weaver's diverse range is evident in the 1982 classic, The Year of Living Dangerously. Set during the political turmoil in Indonesia, Weaver stars as Jill Bryant, a British embassy officer, delivering a performance that balances strength and sensitivity far from the sci-fi settings that made her a household name. The film also features Linda Hunt's award-winning turn as Chinese-Australian photographer Billy Kwan, a role that broke boundaries in casting and celebrated the transformative power of acting. As Hollywood continues to navigate the evolving landscape of character portrayal and typecasting, Weaver's performance in The Year of Living Dangerously serves as a reminder of the complex and dynamic roles that classic cinema embraced. This film not only showcases Weaver's adaptability, but also highlights the industry's historical willingness to explore multifaceted character identities, making it a standout example of nuanced storytelling in film history. News 2. Henry Winkler, best known for his iconic role as Arthur the Fonz Fonzarelli on Happy Days, celebrated his 78th birthday with boundless enthusiasm, dismissing any notion of retirement. In a lively interview with Entertainment Tonight, Winkler attributed his youthful energy to good genes and an unwavering will to be young. I don't even know how to say the word retirement, Winkler quipped. Working is in my DNA. Despite turning 78, Winkler is more active than ever, lending his voice to animated series like The Legend of Vox Machina and Wolf Boy and the Everything Factory, and appearing in the superhero blockbuster Black Adam. Though Winkler admits to some knee troubles, he feels great and remains deeply engaged in his creative endeavors. His latest project, a memoir titled Being Henry, The Fonz, and Beyond, explores his life both on and off the screen. Winkler likens acting to solving a complex puzzle, one that keeps his mind sharp and vibrant. Known as the nicest guy in Hollywood, Winkler attributes his positive reputation to his joyful approach to life. I am happy to be on this earth to meet the people I meet, he shared, reflecting the upbeat spirit that fuels his ongoing passion for new challenges and experiences.